Hello, I am Matthew Thomas, and I am here with Allison and John of Rose on Unread, our featured artist of the week. Thank you guys for digitally hanging out with me tonight. Thanks yeah, for nice having us. You. So, uh, that's right. So, um, how have you guys been doing since uh, there's no Rose on Red shows uh, going on right now? Sad. <laughs> I really want to play really bad. We, uh, it's funny we were we were in the van yesterday um i forget what we were doing we were running around town and we had the trailer unhooked so we were just riding the van around running some errands um and i was like you missed this van and she's like yeah i kind of miss being in it because the van's yeah. been sitting out there and the trailer has been sitting out there for however long we had uh we had a few shows in april and you know they got postponed, and um, they were I think, cool shows too. <laughs> yeah, they're they're trying to start everything back up in August. I don't know how that's gonna go. We've got uh we've got one book for August um, in Memphis with Sons of Texas, and that's kind of like the lockdown comeback show. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm a I'm a Sons of Texas fan, so I'm excited about it. I forgot about that band, and then you played them for me again. I was like, yeah. oh, that band, oh, they're really I, cool. I, I really like, like them, yeah. But we, yeah, we're ready, though. I, it's been too long, and I'm going so crazy, and I'm thinking, I'm like, and we ran, we were working on a new song yesterday, or yesterday right? Yeah, yeah. The practice room, and we're actually talking about playing it, and even though it's not recorded, go ahead and play it, and I'm just like, this would be awesome. I'm ready to do this, and just, I'm just, I'm ready. I'm going crazy. Good. The time now, like the time away from yeah. everything and and having to stay home because she's been off work for since March. Yeah, and I've been I've been able to I've been laid off a couple of times here and there from my job, like a mandatory layoff, and then I've been working from home and back at my office. Um, we work day jobs, obviously, um, in addition to you know working yes. working music full time. So yeah. we have like two full-time jobs essentially but uh but yeah it, it was nice to to kind of have a little bit of a break it didn't really feel like it sometimes because we had to like double up on our social media and then we just released a new music video and we've been working on that since like december of 2019 so we've we've had a lot of stuff behind the scenes kind of going on like writing new music getting that ready yeah. and it like we kind of got a break, but at the same time we we didn't we didn't really get a break. Just a break but, from shows. Yeah, and and it was Studio. nice there for a little while, but then um, you know, and then and now we're just like oh we're. But over then we it. finally got to jam together for like the first time a few weeks ago, and I was like, you think you guys gonna remember these songs? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm like, I hope I do. And we do a Taylor Swift cover, and like every time I mess up the lyrics. And sure enough, when we went and rehearsed, I messed it up. I was like, I should have been listening to that song more, you know. But it'd been like, you know, it'd been so long since we played. Yeah. But it was just so good to get back in a room together. I was like, I never thought I'd say this, but I've missed y'all talking about Jed and Rocky. I was like, I've really missed y'all. <laughs> you'll, you'll never hear us say that again. No, you won't. But, <laughs> but, but I did, and it was great to get in there, and especially to, to write something new, you know, and run to the set and actually not butcher it, not playing in so long. So we did that and it, it went good. And we were like, man, we're kind of impressed that we just did not mess this up too bad, you know, and then wrote a new song. So, and that's we've like jammed twice since we've been back together, I guess. But we've yeah. been writing, we've been in the studio like since, well, we've had a bunch of songs, but um, Rocky listened to some of them. He's like, I really like that one. Let Jed hear it. And so that's what we've been working on. And we got like a ton more, but that's just the, the one that um, that stuck, but it's it almost was written. I mean, it was written in quarantine and um, not being able to get to somebody, and you know, it so it kind of kind of went with everything. So it's kind of cool how that happened. Yeah, quarantine's been really weird. I mean, I was considered essential, so like I I had my job, like I you know, so I was still working like normal hours. I just couldn't you know go anywhere other than like work and home. Everything else was closed, so it was uh, definitely a uh, it was, it was interesting and kind of boring. <laughs> yeah, we've just trying to make the best of it. I, you know, just go back in the studio, try to do something for 30 minutes. If we don't get anywhere, we don't. But at least we went back there and we tried, you know, and 
and we had the video in the works and we were thinking maybe we should release this like right before we start playing shows again and then we're changed our mind and say now let's go in and release it because we're already working on another music video so i was like since we're already doing that let's just go on and drop it and go for it you know and we've had a good response so far so it's been good and uh the music video you're talking about is for the ugly truth which i believe it, uh, that was about four or five days ago was released and yeah. uh, so how and uh, how was it like um, developing and shooting that in, you know uh, that music video? Because there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. We let's say we started planning it like a few months before, I guess. Like we didn't even go out to eat and just talk about it. And we, it was almost when it almost it isn't what was it going to be what it is now? But we were talking about okay, it's a house, and you know there's a girl in there, and she's upset. And we're like, no, we kind of already did that with Better Off. You know, I was like, we need to do something completely different, and we got our friend December and she's like the art she's like does art just pictures she never done a video before and we thought about putting her pictures and bringing them to life and building on a concept of loneliness and um she captured that really well like I don't know how she came up with that stuff in, in her head how she did but it worked great and it's it's a weird video but if you really watch if you stop and watch it a few times you'll get the concept of the loneliness it takes a minute but like she, yeah Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. She she uh she set up each scene of the music video because there's six seven different actual scenes yeah. in the video, and it goes between you know it rapidly goes between them, and she set up each scene with as like a almost like its own photography session, so. There was a, there was, you know, we have, a, we had a videographer um, who we went with a guy named Alan Ingalls this time around, and that's what he does for a living. And then we brought December on board as the artistic creative director, and then we had a, we had a lady, uh, Lauren Walls, who's uh, like a local hair, hair and makeup, uh, you know, person. That's what she does for a living. So. We assembled this like a legit team by, because usually when we would do a music video in the past, we'd get the videographer slash director would, would that would be the same person essentially. And then they would bring like one or two volunteers just to kind of help with yeah. smoke bombs or lights or whatever. But we had a we had an actual team behind this one. We brought we, we assembled uh, a whole new regimen i guess and we wanted to try something completely different and we took a huge risk with it because <laughs> most of our other videos have been fairly safe as in like okay well we're gonna band's gonna play and then we're gonna try to tell like a story maybe one or two locations like you know? one or two locations max and like we already know the song so we're just gonna like play the song five or six times and then let them shoot yeah. that and um but this one, you know, we're just like, let's do something completely different, see how it goes, see how people react to it. And I I kind of wanted, I told him from the get-go, I want people to watch this music video, and, and I want them to think, what the heck did I just watch, but I liked it. You know, that I wanted that kind of response. Like, So I wanted people to like it, but not know why they liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think I think the the team we had pulled it off. Uh, you know, Allison oh, it had more. Oh, it so smooth. Like yeah. the only thing that was bad about it was the heat and having to wear those coats and the suits. It wasn't. We shot but, it in the beginning of May, so it yeah. wasn't too bad. Like the week after, the temperature jumped up ten or fifteen degrees um, Fahrenheit for our international listeners. Um, but yeah, the the temperature was like it was just bearable enough to get. We did all that in one day. Um, we had prepped the day before, and then we had to tear down afterwards, but we started at 5 o'clock in the morning, and then we were finished by 6 or 7 yeah. in the evening, so we did all of that in 14 hours, 15 hours or so, it was a long, long day. And we was went, yeah, and it was my... Like the shit house, that's our property too. We use a lot of places in Jackson, Tennessee, and um, there was like this old radio station, and that's when you say like the the um, like the sheet creeping over us. We're laying down, like that was at the radio station. It's like abandoned now, and then um, 
like the bathtub, the bathtub scene. It sounds dirty, but the bathtub scene, like that was in my backyard. And when we, uh, we set the TV on fire. So if my dad's watching, he's probably he's not going to listen to this, but we told him it was like the fire was fake fire. Like, oh, that's, you know, we're like in Hollywood. We can do that with a fix, but it was like really. It was really <laughs> <laughs> so, he, so he has no idea that we set the TV on fire in the backyard. And I'm like, look, we did it on our side of the yard. Okay. It's okay. We didn't even do it on your side of the yard, you know, but, but he had, he didn't ever say anything about it. I knew he, cause we got, we went in my, my barn up, uh, well, my dad's barn up the, up the road and, uh, got like the table and the chairs out and the table was broke. It was, it was awful. And I was like, he's going to know that we got this stuff. We used the backyard and like, cause he's just real weird about like, he doesn't want anything happening. And I understand that, but like, but we had nowhere to set this TV on fire. So it was like, backyard and we you know made an area where there was no trees and and uh but it, it turned out awesome and nobody got hurt and it, it, it was it was fun it, it probably the most smooth video ever done it was just it, everything went just yeah. way smoother than anything and i think the uh, the team the team we have because for the most part we've been a diy band our entire existence we've booked our own shows we've designed our own merchandise We've written our own music. You know, we've got a producer that records us and, and helps us refine the songs that we've used for a while. And um, we've kind of brought in outside people to help with music videos and stuff like that. But um, we're kind of building a an actual team now because we have the uh, dude with our Patreon group and um, we've been we've been selling a lot more merch lately. We've kind of got the resources to bring in an extra team, people that are better at this stuff than we are, because we're good at writing the music and performing the music, and that's pretty much the extent of what we're good at. So we bring bring in other people who are better at their respective crafts than we are. Like we can, music videos, <laughs> right? Because yeah. I used to, it's be like, we're like, what are we gonna do? And I have to like come up with some kind of crap script this is what we're gonna do right here I, I, me i know like and uh, like room 312 and uh the one uh blindly the blonde they were all like hey this is what i have this is my ideas and y'all have anything else no well, that's what we're rolling with and it, it's it was so much better to have somebody else help me with that because i never had that before yeah. and I, you can tell that with the new video i think it took us a long time to to learn that lesson but yeah. people entrepreneurs and bands especially they try to wear too many hats they try to be uh, more artistic and more creative in other other areas outside of their music, and I think it it really comes off as less than professional. A lot of now some bands can do that, like Taylor Swift uh, is a prime example of being good at everything. Because from what I understand, she's involved in the beginning to end of every, you know she's got a team behind her, obviously. But she is involved in every single thing uh, around her Taylor Swift business. She brings in other people and works with them. But uh, a, a lot of bands that don't have an actual team will try to do it all themselves. And um, some people can do it. We're not one of those bands. Yeah. We, like I said, we're good at writing the music, performing the music, and hanging out and talking to people and um you know, doing the social media and the Patreon thing, you know, the exclusive stuff. And that's really, um, that's what we're good at. And that's what we enjoy doing. And the other stuff that we're not so good at um, and we don't enjoy doing so much, it, it, it frees up creative energy to put back into the music aspect of it. So it was good to bring other people yeah. in on this one. Yeah, you can definitely tell the, um, the production values of um, The Truth. I think Rapture, too. Um, are definitely yeah. um, definitely higher. Um, you know, there's there's a lot going on, and uh, I really did. Especially, I did the other truth. Uh, most mostly just because what you said. It's uh, it's very uh, it's out there. It's kind of you know odd, but um, there's just that feeling, that vibe, that um, it's really you know, it's a really cool music video. And uh, you know, with the um, the uh, mannequins, I, I definitely I, I get where you're going with with the uh, theme of loneliness. Uh, I definitely uh, picked that up. Yeah, it's like, cause if you notice, like the um, the dinner table scene, like they all have food in front of them, and I have an empty plate, like to you know emphasize that loneliness. And and then my favorite, one of my favorite scenes is in the field where it's me on that bed, and just it just looks lonely, cause it's just that big field and just me, you know. And 
I, she, like, she really, when she came up with those ideas and those concepts, like she hit the nail on the head, man. She and and even, awesome. even scenes where they're all of us. All of us are in the scene together. The, Allison will be off to the off center, you know. Whereas you would normally see the centerpiece, like the lead person in the band, they would be like front and center, and it would be more symmetrical. Like we purposely put her off to the side because, again, there's that they we have that loneliness theme. But another big theme in the video was like un, something just uneasy, uneasy, unnerving, like something's off. With this, with this, I don't know what it is, but that, like, every single, you can go back and watch the video and pause every single scene, and something in that scene is put there purposefully to make you unnerved a little bit, uh, uneasy, I guess. And there's, and, yeah, yeah, there's also, like, the, the, there's, where you can see you guys, but I don't know if anybody's noticed it yet, but, like, there's one where I'm, like, my hands over the bathtub, and there are reflections down on the bathtub. And then there's one where I'm um, in that field, and they're over the side. You could barely see their silhouettes, but they're there. And uh, I didn't notice that till like, the fourth time I watched it. So if you haven't noticed that yet, go back, and you can see them just, like, in the distance. And I was like, there they are again. Mm -hmm. They're there. And I, and I, and I text them. I said, did y'all see that? And I screenshot it, and Jed's like, uh, Jed's like, oh, my gosh, I didn't see that, you know. And it was just kind of cool, like, like an Easter egg for yeah. us. Yeah, the un unplanned stuff is Jed, always cool. Yeah, Jed, Jed downloaded Skype. and Then he said, food time, I'm out. All right. Well. <laughs> so. I was, hey, that's all right. I still got okay. you guys with me. Okay. And uh, so the ugly truth is actually off Rapture, which I have right here. Right. Uh, the, the latest EP. And uh, I listened to this, you know, you know, multiple times. And I really dig it. It just... Um, Everything just kind of flows. It has, you know, it, all the songs are unique in their own way, and everything just uh, flows. And uh, so, how was it uh, writing and uh, developing Rapture? Well, I remember when I wrote Rapture, I was having like an inner battle within myself, and that's what came out of it. And then the next song, I think, what was did we write the Ugly Truth first or Rapture first? Was it Rapture? So first? we wrote. I can't remember. We wrote uh, Be No One Be no first. One. But that, it's kind of that same theme, too. Um, like, Lying to Yourself and Rapture. They all have that center of, like, just... Internal almost, struggle. Yeah, internal struggle and trying to find that light, to, you know, to be better. And it's hard, especially with times like today. You know, and, well, yeah. we, we, wrote, we wrote the first four songs separately we didn't write them together we didn't write them with the intention of being related to one another but we we were in such like a personal turmoil um during that year or so and it was just such a weird time for us in the band and in our personal lives and it just all kind of worked out and, and we brought rocky into the band um we we had a guy playing drums for us for a while named Caleb, and he was on the last the EP. The Vultures EP. And Caleb kind of flaked out, and so uh, we ended up with Rocky, who Rocky and I have been friends for 20 years or so. And it, it worked out because I've always – it's it's one of those things, like I've always wanted to play in a band with Rocky – but it just never worked out. And his last band that he was in – for like 10 years they broke up after like they did a they did like an arena tour opening for shine down and then they ended up just kind of going their separate ways so he was free and i was like hey come play with us you know and mm -hmm. and rocky came in and i was like all right yeah we're recording these songs so you need to learn them and he goes by he goes through and listens to the songs and was like i really like this this is y'all's best material to date he's like you know this could be kind of a concept album. And then we're, we went back and we're like, yeah, if we structure these songs just right, then they kind of do tell a story. And, you know, it starts off with Rapture, and that's an ambiguous song. Uh, you can take it as like a personal Rapture or like a religious Rapture. Um, you can take it any different yeah. way you want, but 
the song basically starts out in like a the the EP starts out in a very dark place and it ends up in a dark place, but it ends up being um, kind of more of like a light at the end of the tunnel type of thing. And it's a journey, uh, it's an inner journey throughout the entire EP, Definitely. and um, it's almost like I don't know if you would like read a read a short story or, or play a video game or something. And this, the character is had taken a journey through their, their self, I guess is the yeah. best way to put it. But we did that on purpose to create, we wanted to share story has happened to us the last, year, um, you know, without just coming out and saying, well, this is, this is exactly what happened. Um, this is just kind of what Allison and I were feeling. I think the ugly truth's the only one I didn't write about myself. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's it's first person, but I wrote it about my friend who was going through that, and she would call me, and she was upset about her relationship, and I guess she got in my head so much, I started writing a song about it, and then he had come up with this cool little pop thing, and I was like, well, I got some lyrics that uh, I've been holding on to, and it was, like, perfect for it. So that was, like, the only one, but I kind of did feel like I was going through it with her because – you know, she'd call me all the time and talk about it. And um, so I hope yeah. it helped her, you know, when she, when she heard it. But, um, but yeah, it, it was definitely a personal reflection battle type thing. And, right. But after the EP, you know, we, it was like kind of like a, a weight lifted, fresh air kind of thing once it was all said and done. And yeah, yeah. and now we're already writing for the next one. <laughs> and yeah. and I, I don't know why I always get into I always have like get anxious to record new music and then I almost regret it because when you when you go into the studio at like normally we write the core of the songs and we'll go to the studio and we'll like rewrite them with our producer Dave Cal who's out of Memphis um shout out to Dave who's an amazing producer and has been working he's with us too. for, uh, yeah, he's in the, our Patreon group as well. He's been working with us for a long, since 2013. Yeah. Since the self-titled. Yeah. And yeah. we'll, we'll almost like, we'll, we'll take the demos because I've got a studio here and we'll write these songs and we'll jam them out and, and make sure that they're going to work because you can write a song on the computer and it just doesn't work. Um, live, so we got to we make sure it works, and then we go, we bring them to Dave, and then we almost like completely rewrite them from the you know from the top down or bottom up or however you want to put it, and then then it's a very very intense process because like we just take we just take our music so serious, like we have fun doing it. Don't get me wrong, it's not. Um, it's not a, an awful, horrible process by any means, but it is a very intense process. And um, so, yeah, we're, we're like, I, I think as soon as we recorded these songs and released them last year, we were already working on the next, next batch. That's just how I, like, I just, yeah, I'm one of these people, Allison is too, I just can't sit still. Like, if I sit, if I just mm -hmm. don't do anything for two days, I feel like I'm just, Worthless. Worth, I'm worthless and I'm, and I'm wasting my life. So I'm constantly writing. Like, yeah, if we can get 30 minutes back there and come up with something, every, it's just a riff, a tiny piece of a melody. We and nine times out of ten, know. it sucks. Yeah, but you, you got you to keep doing it. That's what you have to do, yeah. To, you have to keep, you got to write some crap to find a jewel, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, and trial out of, and error. Really. Out of like 10, 11, 12, you know, halfway kind of songs that we've written in the last year, you know, maybe two or three of them have been worth moving forward with, but that's just, that's just how, that's oh, just how it works. Yeah. You know, that's kind of the, the, the name of the game, I guess. Yeah. And I think, um, your, your Rapture EP, I think is some of your strongest music, uh, to date. I think it, it definitely, it, it all kind of tells a story, and I think the the lyrics and the music and the production values are all – they're all there. They're all solid. Well, thank you. That thank means you. a lot to us. We, I think we worked that really hard. matured us a lot. It, you know, it really uh, made us see things differently and approach things differently. And, it, uh, I think it's, yeah. it, it more or less solidified us because I, I go back and listen to those songs, and I'm like, you know, this is – and I don't want to be that guy that – 
you know, has an ego or anything, but I listen to those songs and I've never felt this way about anything I've done in the past. I've always been, the stuff we've done in the past, I've always been proud of to an extent, but I've always thought we could have done better. And with the, the Rapture list of songs that we put out last year, the EP you're talking about, um, I'll go back and listen to those and I'm like, man, we've really just knocked this one out of the park and I'm, I'm super proud of this. And that's, thank you. I've been playing music for half of my life, and this is the first time I've ever felt that way about a group of songs, I think. So thank yeah. you. Thank you. That means thank a lot. Uh, hey, thank you guys for uh, for the music. I mean, I've, I've really enjoyed it, and um, I hope uh, hope everyone else has as much as I have. Yeah. And um, so Rose and Red, uh, you guys, you're an independent band, correct? I mean, not, not signed to a record label. Um, right. What, what are kind of like the uh, challenges and advantages of being an independent band? We don't have, uh, we've had a couple of, since we've put out Rapture, we've actually had a couple of yeah. record label offers for smaller record labels. And it just, the, what they were offering didn't make sense. We're like, okay, well, we can almost do this better and ourselves. And a lot of the stuff we were already doing. Yeah. Like it was- um, but yeah. when you when you jump on a, a legit because there's a lot of record labels out there and distribution companies that are just they're they're not going to do anything really for you if you're already putting the work in. But um, when you do have an, a, an actual record label, you have a team behind you that is good at marketing, um, good at helping you write. They can put you in touch with different producers and songwriters. Um, but. Uh, so essentially we don't have the only money that we have uh, to push this band and to further this band is what we bring in from our merch sales and from our Patreon uh, subscribers. So thank you guys. Um, Occasional jewelry sales. Yeah. yeah. A- Allison, Allison sells jewelry and um, I mix and produce bands on the side and all that money goes back into this. And so the band is, is, um, self-sustaining in that regard but uh compared to a record label with a you know six figure seven figure budget um you know we we don't we just we can't compete with that um so the bands that are on the the actual record label with a budget they they can do more um so to answer your question but at the same time i've seen bands that don't have a record label have bit higher numbers than bands that are on record labels and and make more money than bands that are on record labels and simply because they just have the music and the work ethic to do that you know if you're if you're that good and i'm not talking about us specifically but uh there was a band um out of michigan i'll, I'll name drop here uh eva under fire uh, who they're another female fronted rock band and they did everything on their own and they, their sales numbers and their streams and, and video views, they outdid a lot of bands that were on smaller record labels and they were doing it all just the five of them. They recently signed to better noise uh, records last year, I believe either last. Yeah. I think it was last year. Um, so yeah. Yeah, but they like they they've come through our neck of the woods a couple of times, and I've been a fan of them for a couple of years now. Like I was late finding out about them, but they're a really good band. And that's just one example of if you've got if you've got the talent and you've got the the good music to back up your image and all that, and you've got the work ethic because you do have to treat it like it's a full time job. You can't like oh, like you ever seen the movie Sling Blade when the guys like the the drunk stepdad guys like let's get the band together he's drunk and he gets his band together and they never practice and they they're awful <laughs> have you ever seen that movie no i haven't you know, that's it. a, it's an amazing movie yeah. but there's a scene where he's like he's like drunk and uh he's like well i'm gonna call the band up and then he calls his friends and they like obviously never they haven't played together <laughs> in like a year or two and they're just awful and um you can't do that if you're if you're going to if you're going to want to be a legit you know artist you have to put the work mm-hmm. into it and you got to put the 30 40 50 60 hours a week into it in addition to yeah. everything else so you got else going on doing, right yeah. so yeah you long, long-winded, long-winded long-winded answer to your question but uh, you know, watch, I will. Yes, watch sling blade watch sling blade <laughs> with billy bob thornton and and um 
you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I, I will put that on my list. I, I was I got Jaws marked for this weekend, so uh, I'm gonna do Fourth of July weekend Jaws, baby. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, I mean, uh, we're, we're talking about different music, and I always ask my guests this. Uh, outside of your band, what music are you currently listening to? What did I listen to? You probably, like... I can, I can well, tell you right now. Yeah, um, my favorite band, Seven Dust, but I haven't list been listening to Seven Dust. I've kind of been listening to, like, some pop lately. I've been listening to Ariana Grande a lot and Taylor Swift, but, like, I think uh -huh. listening different genres is what makes this band because if we just stuck to listening to one thing it, it all sound the same so we have these different elements we you know we're throwing in because of all the different stuff we listen to like i think i was listening to like luke combs and then then i put in taylor swift and then i then i was listening to stitched apart so i just get go back and forth like it's I, my my musical brain's crazy it's i'll just, i'll go through like a pop and country stage and right now i've been there's a lot of good real really really good rock music that's been that's come out in the last little bits but um i was listening to some old deftones a few weeks ago and then there's a band called spirit box from canada have you ever heard of them i have not no the, so they're a it's a, they're a husband wife uh like metal band and this girl can like scream and sing both exceptionally well and she was they were in that band uh i wrestled a bear once that metal band from back in the day well that when that band broke up or whatever they formed spirit box a few years or yeah like three or four years ago they're really good we've been listening um, to um Asking Alexandria's new one. Asking oh, Alexandria's new one. Um, I dude, I went back and listened to the first who, two Hoobastank albums last week, and I forgot how much I love that band. I even tweeted the singer, um, Doug, I on Twitter, and I was like, "Dude, I'm just I'm jamming this from like when I was in high school and junior high." Which one was I, the white CD? It was a white. Dance. That was the reason that came yeah. out like 2003. I, I was jamming that one for a while a few weeks ago. There's a band, uh, I forget where they're from, but they're a female-fronted band from over in Europe, maybe, called Future Palace, and they're really good. I and know, then there's a band from Oklahoma called Outline and Colored that they just put out a brand new song called Alibi that's amazing. And um, Hands Like Houses from Australia just put out a new song um, that one, one of so my favorite producers. speaking of Hands Like Houses, today, like, because I was, I was sad for given reasons, that uh, cover of Torn they do, mm -hmm. I'll listen to that thing, like, That's over the first song. and over That's how we... and over again today. Like, it was just something about it. And, and that, if anybody has not heard that cover of Torn, but Hands Like Houses does it justice, like, so good. Yeah. And then Amur, Amur put out a new CD, and our friends Divisive, uh, our friends in Divisive, they're like a straight-up deathcore band. If you're into just really heavy stuff, they put out a new CD, I think it was last Friday, this past Friday, and it's really good. So I've been jamming them. Um, shout out to my boys in Divisive. And we're... Not we are not a metal band at all. Like people who don't listen to metal will listen to us and say, "Oh, they got heavy guitars. They're a metal band." Like I don't consider us a metal band. I just consider us like a pop rock band that plays a riff every now and then. Like Silver Lining, there was some metal on that a little bit, but it was with the members we had at the time. But you know, now that we don't have them anymore, it's like our styles change. So we're, yeah. you know. Uh yeah hard rock with pop elements i mean i guess yeah or a pop band that ha that plays riffs is what i tell people and then they're like what does that even mean i don't know we listen to listen taylor to swift <laughs> and we're in a rock band if that's you know <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. It's i i like i like that definition for rosa and red i'm gonna if anyone asks i'm gonna use that now i mean that's that's the best I can, I mean. Because if you tell people you're in a rock band, they're like, okay, you know, one of these guys, you yeah. know, they think we're doing like, you know, Creed covers on the weekends or something. Creed Bird! I love, I love Creed and I love Leonard Skinner, but that's not what we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, this week I've been listening to uh, Alter Bridge. They're, uh, yeah. I got. Yeah, I got to see them, like, right before everything got shut down. That was, like, my last concert I went to, and uh, I loved it. Did you do uh, Lowry opening that yes. tour? Yes. Oh, jealous. That's my, he's my favorite guitarist ever. Uh, 
Uh, we saw Alter Bridge in Nashville. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Mark Germani threw a pick and it landed in my shoe. Nice. And I was like, uh, I forgot all about it. <laughs> I was like, I was like having a like a girl like a chat like a true little girl freak out. I was like, mm-hmm. oh my god, it's in my it fell in my shoe. You know, it was like Mark Germani's pick. I like, still got it in my scrapbook. Yeah. Like it went in my shoe. I was like, oh, like a freak out moment. Yeah, girly scream happened. I'm sure. <laughs> I would freak out, too, if I got a pick from Tremonti, because that guy, he is a phenomenal guitarist. Well, we I were, saw we him got... throw it. I didn't know where it went, and it was in my shoe. I was like, whoa. Yeah, in that concert, we got really close because that it was, was a smaller awesome. place. We got, uh, we were probably about 10 feet and 15 feet from him, um, so we were we were pretty close to the front. We had to fight our way up there, but that was a good, they're, they, they're a phenomenal band. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know? Favorite bands. Gosh. Oh, that's the, that first album, man, it just takes me back. Like, every time I listen to it, I'm just like, oh, it's just like Simple Times. That album was so good. Gosh, it was so good. Now I want to listen to it again. See what you've done. <laughs> that's what I'm here <laughs> for. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it, it was cool, you know, during the Clint Lowry set, um, I, think it was, I think it was his bassist. Um, he, like, climbed, like, part of the um, amp, like the, um, the PA system. He jumped <laughs> off it. Do you do a, your show too, or you did a, a? This was a while back. I think I don't know what album they had. Um, it was like during their. It, this was a few. This was back in like 2014, 2015. Oh, okay. it was a while back. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, I don't remember who they played with. It was somebody else, pretty big. They played with Stain, Stain that Stain? night in uh, ten years. Yeah. That okay. Yeah. It was a good show. They had a upstairs and a downstairs. That's right. And then they the would have, that, yeah. Yeah. Nice. But yeah, they they were awesome. That and I just got lucky with the pick going in my shoe. <laughs> yeah. But I'll forget. <laughs> right on. All right. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I got you know, one more thing before we go. I know sure. it's a little bit of a tough question since it's uh, 2020, but uh, what are the uh, future plans for uh, Rose and Red in 2020? We've got, uh, we've got some other behind the scenes stuff, like, you know, what we talked about earlier in the interview, we've, we're still working on some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, we would like to, if we are not able to release any new music uh, or a new v- video by the end of the year, a new single, we at least like to have it ready for the beginning of next year. But basically to, not be uh, cryptic, I guess, and to answer your question more directly is we're trying to, at the very least, we're trying to set ourselves up in 2020 to have a a big 2021, if that makes sense. And like just bring you guys more content on a more regular basis, Um, stuff that will keep you excited and keep you coming back and keep you engaged for the remainder of 2021. And that's not to say if now if they, you know, we do got a, a couple of shows booked um, or at least one show booked and a few more in the works for 2020 in August and October. But, you know, we'll see how those work out. I'm, I'm hoping that they work out good. So we might jump back on the road and, and get as far as we can by the end of the year. Um, we'll just have to see. But we're we're still working behind the scenes and we've got a few things kind of up our sleeve. Um, so at the very least, we'll come out swinging in 2021. I'm hoping for a better year next year. Mm-hmm. I was like over this. Yeah, we've got like <laughs> like we've got uh, we've got like almost a full album worth of material being written right now, and, and we'll probably have more. And, it's and like, we'll have more, but then think. again, most of those ideas are awful. So you, so well, so we I might have like completely awful. There's like parts of them that are awful. They yeah. just need a little, little polish. Yes. Yeah, so you know? we're we're gonna. That's where producer comes in. Yeah. And so we're you know we're we're treating it like it's gonna like 2021. We're treating it like okay, we we've, we've kind of used up all of our ammo. We've got to come out with something better. Yeah. You know we gotta we try to outdo ourselves every, every. time. Um. And that's going to be really hard this time around because Rapture, we put everything we had into it. Um, but we, we're going to try to outdo ourselves uh, for the rest of 2020 and 2021, definitely. I can promise you that. So you'll probably see a lot of 
behind the scenes stuff in the studio of like us tracking and stuff because yeah. that's a lot what it's going to be. And we'll go live uh, in the secret page at the show and stuff if, yeah. if the show is still on <laughs> and all that. But yeah, uh, so jump in yeah. the Patreon group if you if you want to catch us opening for Sons of Texas next month yeah. in August. Not I. No. Yeah. Next, yeah, we're still in June yeah, right now. We're almost in July. Well, uh, mm-hmm. kind of. I mean, it's like we had two I, days of June left. I like if I don't go back to work soon, time's just gonna be non-existent. Yeah. Like I have, I need to get on back on a schedule. It's like, so like doing the interview and stuff. I was like, oh, okay, something I can actually write down on a schedule, you know, and something to do, you know. It's like something to look forward. Yeah, to. something to look forward to because it's like man, everything's been just yeah, yeah, but. Ready yeah, for, for new things and everything to get better. But yeah, dude, thank you for taking the yes. time to uh, to have us on and hang out with you, man. It means the world to us. And hey, thank you guys for uh, for uh, doing the interview. Um, so I got you know one more thing. Uh, if people are interested, what are some of the best ways um, to support Roses on Red? We uh, our official website is rosesunredofficial.com. That take that'll take you to our YouTube, our uh, Spotify, iTunes, all that good stuff. That's like our central hub. But just the best way to support us is um, find our Patreon. It's uh, Patreon.com/slash Roses Unread. U N R E A D V O X like Roses Unread Vocals, that's Allison's Patreon group, and there's a secret Facebook page that you can be a part of. That and, you're in. <laughs> yeah. And that, you're awesome. <laughs> that, is, that is the best way single-handedly to support us besides coming out to a show. Because all that goes to, you know, for new music videos, for, you know, studio time, for, you know, anything else we want to do. So, yeah. for, and, you know, for everybody. If, if, you're not, if, if, if you're not able to do that, um, the second best thing you can do is stream our music on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever your preferred platform is and um, share the video and share the music with your friends. Yes. Uh, pick up your friends on the weekends when you're able to and and show, share our music and get other people excited about it. That, that is the best mm-hmm. the without the, without having to spend any money on us directly like you know, whatever you feel like doing is fine and we appreciate it but uh, the, the the main thing we want people to do is to get excited about what we're doing and share it with somebody else yeah yeah and um I'm, i try to share music you know on my page i, I shared the uh, ugly truth on the super cool radio page so that's up right. right now thank you so much hey not, it, it's honestly the least people can do is at least, you know, if you're on Facebook, Twitter, whatever social media is to just, if you like a music video, if you like the music, just share it. It doesn't cost anything. Share it. Just hit a button. Yeah. That's what I mean. But then, I but, then but then you got to talk, you got to tell what you like what? about it. Like I like the fact that you can't see John's face because he's ugly in this video. That was the best you know? part that about was, it. That's we all the best covered part. Faces. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> Somebody even said that that was like they were like we didn't have to see their ugly faces. We didn't have to deal with that crap. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but no, man, we, y'all we appreciate took that like a truth though. Like, yeah. I couldn't have had it on my face all day. We uh, mm-hmm. we appreciate you guys so much, man. It means the world to yeah. us that uh, that you guys like care about what we're doing because if nobody cared about what we're doing, we'd probably we'd we probably think, we'd probably still do it, but it wouldn't be, it wouldn't as, be good. as good or serious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. We'll always do it because we love it, but. Knowing y'all love it makes it even, you know, yeah. even better and pushes us to do better. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, thank you guys uh, for hanging out with me. And, you know, live on the secret uh, Facebook group right now. I'll have the interview up uploaded the next day. So, some to look forward to. And um, I recommend anyone listening, if you haven't listened to Rapture, do that. And, and all your stuff, all, all your music, because I really dig it. So, Thank you. So, more time, John Allison of Rose on Red, our featured artist of the week. Thank you so much for having us. Love you guys. Y'all be good. Thanks, Matt. See you later, Matt. Have a good night. You too.